a very special thank you to everybody who tunes in to the Justin Podcast. And I also want to give a special thanks to all my sponsors. Everybody is trying to get more fit nowadays. And with Blue Apron, that there is possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Apron slogan is, Give the gift of home cooking. That's right. These guys have home cooked meals that are delivered, ready to be cooked, already prepared at your doorstep. You can get your delivery when it's convenient for you. So that means there's no commitment. And there's even personalized menus. You can select from their two person or family plans. And you can tell us, you know, you can tell Blue Raven your dietary preferences and they'll personalize the menus that you receive. They have convenient deliveries. Ingredients are carefully packaged in a refrigerated box so food stays fresh even when you're not home during the delivery. So, you know what I'm saying? All you got to do, ladies and gentlemen, is go on to blueapron.com to check out, uh, you know, all of the different details. You want to add anything to that, RJ? Uh, that's blueapron.com. Uh, see site for details. Uh-uh. He's a pioneer and the voice for XTV East Coast. He's the XTV Hall of Famer. And now, Justin Turkey Legs brings his famous voice to the podcast world. This is Justin's Podcast. Welcome, everybody. Another edition here, Justin's Podcast. I'm your host, of course, Ernest Justin Turkey Leg. And today we got part two of my interview with Big Trunks D Matic. Man, I tell you. I sat down uh, with Trunks uh, those all those months ago, and uh, I don't know. We just uh, we just chopped it up, and you know it was a good conversation. And uh, you know I always try to get something different out of my guests, you know. And it's like I was saying, uh, you know, in that first part, it's like you know Trunks, you know we talked about everything already, you know, and and you one of the most talking people, it is in XTV. We already know, you know, your whole history, but. When you kind of dig a little bit deeper, you realize not so much. Hold on for a second, because you know he really got deep into uh, F and K. You can hear his excitement in, uh, in in talking about you know that time period and uh, realizing that you know they have something, and um, you know it's just a lot like us. You know you'd be surprised what you find when you just hit that record button and just get rolling. You'd be surprised what you find. Uh, as you on the West Coast, I'm sure, have seen. A um, few things on my mind this week. Of course, I'm still going through my issues uh, mobily. I mean, I'm, man, I'm asking everybody I know. I done got like all kinds of rides from all kinds of people. And you know, it's been, been, been very, uh, it's been a blessing. You know, I, I got to say, um, you can hear the, uh, you can hear it in my voice, you know, uh, when I was recording uh, my last show, you know, just how I was feeling about the whole matter. But, you know, I, I'm just not waking up out of bed. That's why I'm sounding like this right now. But, uh, you know, I got to tell you, it hasn't been so bad and the people have been so nice. I can't be mean to them, like, for a long time. You know what I mean? Like, I got to watch my behavior because people being, like, extra nice to me. Extra accommodating. <clears throat> it's amazing. So, I'm uh, very appreciative to everybody who's, uh, who's been, you know, uh, such a big help. The NXTV uh, roster, in my opinion, is um, it's, it's starting to pick up momentum. Um... You know, the, their, their stars are, um, they're starting to, I'm starting to care about them, you know, and um, I've been watching, uh, you know, the TV. Of course, you know, I'm here on the East Coast, so we got much more availability to uh, NXTV than the West Coast would. I think uh, over there on the brand new XTV World Channel, there's two episodes uploaded, and uh, those are some videos that I recommend you check out. It, uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty good show. But you know they they still got they still got you know a ways to go. It's uh it's still a story that needs to unfold and be told. But um, 
I gotta say, you know, in the recent weeks, uh, you know, from what I've noticed, you know, uh, with the help of B-Boy, you know, Sketch and Malia, you know, that, that kind of, that tandem right there, you know, and he, even though Malia is not with B-Boy and Sketch on the program, you know, uh, it still works. You know, everybody know that they all associated and, you know, Killer points out everything, you know, we we can't kayfabe with, with people like Bob and Killer roaming around. We be trying to have something going and then, you know, so either one of them two, that's just fucking up the whole thing. But, you know, it's it's, it's definitely been fun. This whole back and forth thing with uh, B-Boy and Killer. I think B-Boy's got a couple wins over Killer. Uh, he beat him in the steel cage. And uh, I think... Uh, Maybe it was another match and Killer got a win over B-Boy. This is a back and forth thing. And, of course, Jazzmar got his issues with B-Boy. In my opinion, you know, this is helping B-Boy come up. Uh, you know, he's getting um, he's getting quite the status. You know, it, uh, in my opinion, I think that he's going to be, you know, a breakout star this year. Uh, <clears throat> what else is going on in that world over there? Um... Another person uh, is uh, Raylan, you know, she came in and, you know, she was real quiet at first and um, she really didn't, she really didn't have nothing, you know, in all fairness, hell, you know, we only had the game probably since February or something like that. And so, you know, it's been a slow development, but like I said, Raylan came in real quiet and, uh, you know, people asked her to talk and, you know, people we had to cover for, oh, no, she she ain't ready yet, you know. But once she found her voice and, you know, uh, you know, because, you know, we, we help these kids over here, you know, uh, and we really, you know, ponder on, you know, gimmicks and uh, and characters and ideas. And it was just like, well, you know, she kind of looked like Brandy, you know. You know, you look at her picture and it's like, you know, that's a, that's a good fit for her. And, uh you know, when she, when she talked for the first time, you know, the guys really had uh, popped. And now she got the whole thing. That's why, uh, uh, that's another thing you should uh, check out. Uh, check out the uh, the TLI XTV, the latest in XTV, the, uh, the news update with Sally. And towards the end, Raylan got a part that I really think you'll get a kick out of. Uh, it's a, that, 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 that's also a brand new show, uh, the TLI XTV, you know, and I like the way, you know, it's, uh, I like the way, you know, they just really was able to fit in a whole lot of the things that, that was current, you know, uh, on that show, you know, Sally, uh, do her thing as a host. I think that it's a, uh, it's a different feel. It's another one of those things that's just a completely different feel, you know, um, and it's, uh, content that's adding more variety to the east coast so you know it's real good uh you know the east coast is just all over the place and you know um as far as content i'm really just busting it out and uh you know i know that the west coast uh ain't too far behind in fact we can expect uh this week you know i'm, I'm recording this on june 7th so uh I, I think that we can expect this week for that summer slam program to be coming out uh, what we've all been waiting for Apparently the uh, holdup has been um, Renee Young's big head. Uh, Queendom made her debut, and uh, you know she uh, had a uh, interview with uh, Mac Anthony, I believe, on uh, his uh, opening podcast, his inaugural podcast, I should say. Uh, we haven't heard that piece just yet; it hasn't been released. But she did have a, a interview, uh, nonetheless, on that. And she made her debut, and she's here. She's ready. Uh, you know, what she's going to do moving forward, um, you know, nobody really knows just yet. You know, here's the deal on the whole NXTV thing. I mean, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a branding idea. It's a, it's, it's a way to get familiar with new people and for you to care about them before they, you know, just step in and, you know, uh, you know, I, I realized that, you know, you, you, you got these dream matches that you would like to happen, but wouldn't they be much more special if they didn't just happen initially? You know, let's have these matches 
And, you know, and, and I was talking about this earlier. You know, let's have the matches that we've been wanting to have. You know, I can understand Shannon versus, you know, Dixie or uh, or Big Trap versus uh, DT. You know, because, you know, the, that's kind of already been going on anyway. But, you know, as far as the other guys, you know, let them be what they be. You know, it, it's, it's something different. And, you know, in my opinion... You know, it's beginning to work. It's a NXTV pay-per-view uh, event coming up uh, in the month of June. You know, but uh, and it's like a, a, on that uh, on that update, Sally was saying that you know we had lost our uh, recording device, which we did, but then it had power back up. But today, it went the fuck off again, and I got it on the charge. It ain't doing shit right now, so I don't know what the hell going on with it. I thought it was water damage at first, but now I just I just don't know. So, you know, uh, that's what it is on that. I know I'm all over the place, but a lot of, uh, as you can tell by, you know, my sentiment, there's a lot of exciting things going on in the world of XTV. Of course, uh, if you don't know by now, we are on Facebook. A uh, whole lot of things being posted on there. The uh, Yosef versus Nicki Minaj got quite the reaction. Uh, I was surprised that it got several likes on there. And people are also uh, reacting to um, to a lot of the characters that have, you know, created themselves on uh, on the game, uh, you know, uh, because you're able to be shared via Facebook and you can share it uh, via the PlayStation Network and, you know, there's been a whole lot of compliments on uh on a lot of the guys' gear and their character uh yaki was a big hit this week with uh three downloads and he uh and yeah you know somebody was like yeah we like you guys as uh characters and, you know of course miss martha always uh the uh proper representative it's gonna be uh, a sad thing at the end of the year when she has to hang it up can you believe it after this year, I mean, two whole years with my wife, Martha, as the commissioner, and really no blemishes on her record. I mean, that's that's a first in XTV, you know. She hasn't argued with nobody, you know, knock on wood, you know. But, I mean, she's just been pleasant, delightful. Everybody res has respected her, you know. Uh, I'm surprised about that, you know. Like, even people like Killer, or, you know, my guests, Big Trunks. You know, uh, I mean, he do be saying some sideways shit sometimes, like, oh, yeah, you know, I want to fuck your wife. He don't say it like that, but he mean it like that. <clears throat> Anyways, now I'm rambling. Uh, here's uh, part two of my interview with Big Trunks D-Matic. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a real good talk, um, you know, and... You know, I, I had to cut it off at that one right, right, right way. Uh, you know, he was talking about sitting with Bill, and you know, it started. It got, got real good, but you know, I can't run on too long. But you know, as promised, here it is my interview with Big Trunks D Man. If you're in the market to buy a new or used car, you got to check out TrueCar.com. Registered TrueCar members get access to a network of more than 13,000 certified dealers who are committed to price transparency and upfront pricing. Members also have access to the mobile price check tool that gives you access to upfront pricing on new cars available on certified dealer lots nationwide. Get started with True Car today to experience ultimate price transparency. You can just choose from any vehicle that's on the, that they got listed, but I'm pretty sure they got all of them. See what others paid. Use the data to become an expert in 60 seconds. True Car has connected has collected millions of transactions nationwide so that we know what people are paying in your local area. You get up-to-date pricing, information, and ability to compare pricing before you get in dealership. Only registered true car users receive guaranteed savings and receive a 1 million in-stock vehicles nationwide. Our certified dealers will say... <laughs> Our certified dealers will search their inventory to find a vehicle that matches your preferences and provide your guaranteed savings up front. So, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. What you want to do is uh, go on truecard.com. Anything you got to say about that, RJ? Uh, subjects and restrictions may apply. See website for details. Uh-uh. Podcast. To me, I 
think that's one of the things that really made it super duper anger change because he broke the tape out of anger. He was mad at Sandra or some shit. And, you know, even when he did it, he was just like, like, why in the fuck did I do that? He was mad. He was like, he hated himself. You know what I'm saying? He was like really down about that shit. And then, um, you know what I'm saying? It's from there, like, he was just like, man, I'm just going to start to acknowledge this shit. And he talked to Bill about that. Yeah. Something on your, something spilled right there. But anyway. But, uh, yeah, he talked to Bill about it. He just said, yeah, man. You know, he was just like, you just got to catch it. When, when you about to feel it, you got to catch it. You know, mm-hmm. and he just, you know, yeah. he he been catching it, you know, but shit, he still get pissed off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like like he don't like soccer moms. Hey, you know, so, you know <clears throat> certain things set you off, man. Right. You know, and um, you know, you know, like for me, you know, it's, you know, I did I deal with certain shit like when you give when you give one hundred and ten percent. You give your all. You're doing the best of your possible ability. And the motherfucker still got shit to say. I can't stand an ungrateful motherfucker. That's that's what I hate. You know, and, and that's what Soup was talking about, that drunk dude. Like, like, that, that, like he, he don't like that guy. Like, he really don't like his ass. It's like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, Soup done, you know, I don't know. He just be asking for shit. Soup be doing it. You know what I mean? But now it's at a point where it's like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Because he always talking shit. It's like, why the fuck would I do shit for you? Like, I don't owe you shit. You ain't my father. You ain't nothing to me. You know what I mean? You another human being. That I'm, you know, at the kindness of my heart, I'm doing something nice for your ass. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's just like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't understand people's, you know, thinking and shit. Like, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the shit that, that, that irks me, though. Yeah. Yeah. I started the damn cut a promo. I had the craziest day to day trunks, you know, and it won't be no open to this podcast because you know, you know, we just got right into it. But you know, the first thing that happened to me was I had um I had a crook in my neck when I woke up. Oh shit! You know, you know, you know like like no big deal. Like you know, it's like but okay. the shit hurt. Though. Yeah, it, it hurt. It hurt. And, you know, I, I remember being asleep with my big ass, and I knew I ain't had no business being in that position, but I was just so deep in the <laughs> sleep that I stayed there with my big ass and paid for it when I woke up. So I got it. And that's why you saw me turning my neck like this a little while ago, because I was like, damn, I'm, 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 I'm cured. You know, I'm healed. But he cured it. You know, I, I ain't know what to say cured or healed. <laughs> I ain't know what to say cured or healed. Healed. Cured. Or healed. Curd. Cured. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time, Trunks. Yes, it is. But anyways, I had a crook in my neck. That shit echo. Then I got to the fucking job. Everybody looking at me because they looking for the truck for 15, 25, or 15, 26. You know, and apparently I had text to do yesterday the wrong truck number. So they looking through all these trucks trying to find the merchandise that I left on the truck. You know what I'm saying? So I got to go get the truck. He's like, go get the truck and, you know, bring the other truck back. You know, he said it all rude and shit. I'm like, you know, all right, cool. You know, put all gloves on, start working and shit. You know, then, you know, go ahead. You know, I helped, you know, Clenard ass. Clenard, this old Terrell that looking ass, skinny ass motherfucker. You know, and, you know, good kid, young kid, 21 years old. You know, a little whippersnapper. But he got a badass attitude. He, he one of these... Yeah, motherfuckers like damn man crying over every little thing LT you know you know that was so, a shoot. so so I'm so I'm I'm helping him load up his truck you know and he taking forever to find his shit you know I'm helping you know what I'm saying so not cause because it's my turn to, to load up next so now I'm loading up you know I gotta go get my truck DJ called me I ain't even been over that damn you know five ten damn minutes tops and he calling me like, hurry up, I got to get over here. You know what I'm saying? And then they throwing shit all on my truck, you know. And then so so now as a result of that, like, you know what I'm saying? Them rushing and throwing the shit on my truck, you know what I'm saying? Now, like, I had made a mistake and didn't drop off something at, uh, at my first stop that I was supposed to uh, fucking, you know, stop at. You know, so I had to go all the way back, you know, at the end, which wasn't a big deal. But, you know, it's still backtracking. And it's all they fault, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't load my truck the way I like to load it. They was all just like, you know what I'm saying? 
I couldn't, you know, I, I, the motherfucker had stole my pen, so I couldn't do my damn paperwork trunks. And then I did find a pen, and it was writing for like three seconds, and then all the ink had went out. Just a bunch of just like unfortunate shit. There's a song by Tribe Called Quest called Eight Million Stories. It's Five Dog singing on that. That's the first song I played when he passed. I, that's the first shit I played. And it's just like, thank you. He just mentioned all this bullshit he going through. It's like, bro, my life. You know what I mean? Took the, took his little brother down to KB to, to get Barney. You know what I'm saying? They ain't selling it. He crying. He trying to pick out his outfit for, 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 to um, you know, cause he going out with his girl later on that night. He picking out his outfit, you know, and then uh, he talking to her on the phone. Then that shit is frying. You know what I'm saying? His suit that he was gonna wear out. You know what I'm saying? And all these dudes still out his car and shit. It's like, thank you. Like, just a bunch of unfortunate ass shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't asked for this. I just wanted to wake up and do my job. Serious. Right. It would not And it don't just stop. It's like, and and, and then when you think about it, you you, you like, okay, it started with just some small shit, a crook in my neck. But it's like, for me, I notice when certain shit started to happen, I'm like, this finna build, ain't it? I I'm woke like, up this I, morning. I, I, I be trying to be like I'm like, nah. No, but nah. when listen, when it keep happening, you know that shit was about to go down. My feet hurting this morning like they was hurting and shit. I'm like, oh shit, it's gonna be one of them days. Cause the way it was hurting, it's like usually after a while, I put it inside the uh, tub. You know what I'm saying? Let the hot water hit it and shit like that, and you know wait for it to like heal. Shit, that shit. Like, I was walking down the stairs slow as hell. I'm surprised our mom ain't complain. But it's like, I was hurt. I'm, I was in pain. It's like, what the fuck wrong with my foot? I didn't even work uh, Thursday. I ain't work. So how in the fuck do my foot hurt this bad? You know what I'm saying? I drank my coffee, and I'm like, okay, maybe now I'll be up. Shit, I was sleepy all day today. Like, I was just dragging, and my feet was still hurting. And I don't even remember what... Just a bunch of bullshit just kept happening, though. Like, I learned that I had to push in 10 carts now. I can't push in as many as I want because Jerry, the other cart pusher, you know what I'm saying? He almost ran into the damn... um, The the, uh, the, the manager that watched the cameras, he almost ran into him, and he almost ran into this other girl, Ran Ranisha, you know what I'm saying? Because he don't be paying attention, though. Like, you know, I know I, I do this. I, I'm on the Zeke Will shit, but he take the pills, you know what I'm saying? So, like, a lot of times, he ain't really in it, you know what I'm saying? And he just be, like, I be saying him when he be pushing cars, he be pushing the shit like this, and he ain't looking straight in front of him. Like, I be saying that shit, and I be like, damn, how come he ain't paying attention? Like, but he t- he'd be like... I- I ain't trying to make fun of him, but he'll say, I ain't having caffeine. He always say that, you know what I'm saying? And I be knowing it because I'm like, oh, shit, he go one of them days he ain't have no caffeine. You know what I'm saying? And he say it like that all the time. That's, and, and, and like, because if with I see him with that body motion, right. y'all can't see it. And if I see him, <laughs> and if I see him working like that, I go on the side of the building, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, it's one of them days I didn't have any caffeine. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn. So that means I got to work extra hard because he's super tired. So he can only push one slowly at a time or five slowly at a time. So I got to work extra. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's not the diss him. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, shit. I get it. You know? But, it's like it should be equal. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, no well. Surprisingly, he helped me today. And I'm like, he helping. Like, I really yeah, couldn't believe he, he that shit. He and he turned baby face. I'm like, what the fuck he helping? Like, you know what I'm saying? Who was no what? The manager? No, nah, the other guy. The other kid that like your music. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? He got bad breath. Yeah, and then he was like... <laughs> it's just some of my people with bad breath that stand out to me. <laughs> Stay away from that nigga. <laughs> well, no, it's just like... You bad, know what I'm saying? Like, like but when, when he wasn't helping me, imagine just you. All these fucking cars. A bunch of rude-ass customers coming in. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that means I got to push cars for him and him because he don't want to work and he ain't had no, no caffeine. <laughs> so all this different shit going on. It's like, imagine what I'm going through. I know. You know what I mean? So today was one of them days my feet ain't working. You know no, what I'm saying? You know, it's, not, it's like I told you, Charles. I'm like, man, it's in the air. When I, have, when, I, when I went to work this morning, you know, and I was feeling how I was feeling, and, you know, it's Friday you know, and I just want to get the day over with. You know, that's how it is. And I feel like 
everybody else felt the damn same way. A lot of the times inside of the warehouse, everybody morale be up. They laughing, they shooting jokes, they this and that. The music playing, it's going down. You know what I mean? It's like, yes, early in the morning, we all got to do this shit. But this is this is what we got to do, and we're going to at least make it fun. But today was one of those days that it's like, I'm tired. And with the bullshit today, That's how I was. Give yep. me my boxes. The same Let me load way. my truck and get the hell out of here. And I respect Ronisha and everybody, but it's like, you know, when she was like, oh, yeah, uh, Alberto to- to- told you to bring in, you know, uh, 10 at a time. Just keep it 10 at a time because Jerry almost hit, hit uh, me, me, me and him. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, you know, and of course I did not abide by that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, look. I'm finna put it to you as best as I can, okay? When I first started doing this shit, they started me off at the worst time possible to be cart pushing. In the middle of like the Black Friday <clears throat> and the um the holidays pretty much. They started me right there. So like I was just listening to what they said, do ten at a time. I couldn't do ten at first. That shit was tough. Them shits didn't budge, you know what I'm saying? And some of them carts is are raggedy as fuck. So it's like you got to really push through. You know what I'm right, saying? Exactly. Right. So it's like I was pushing in ten at a t- pushing in five at a time. Bunch of customers coming before I even get inside the building. Thank you. And just taking it. Rude shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, I got to do ten at a time. You know what I mean? And then the, he's managers mouthing all that. Me talking yeah. shit. Oh, bring right, in right. more than that. Bring in more than that. Yeah. So now it's like out of anger. Yep. Motherfucker, this is how much you want? Oh, you're going to kill yourself. So. Sorry. But nah, it's like Nah, I ain't gonna you kill know, myself for that. No, 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 I wasn't gonna kill myself. Nah, nah, I, know what you're saying, I, I could control like, like at first though. I couldn't control it, but now it's like I know what to do. It's really about controlling that first cart. I, t- I told Noel that, you know, he got good. You know what I'm saying? But it's like that's all it is. Just control that first shit. You know what I mean? The only p- true problem that I'm having with this shit is these carts be old as fuck. Yeah, you got that one in the middle that's got that old rusted Thank ass you. wheel that's slowing down the whole train. It's slowing down the whole shit. Or the wheel don't work at all. You know what I'm saying? And then you got to deal with these southern yeah, motherfuckers. Because, I mean, as long as it rolls, it's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, you ain't pushing all these shits. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, because cause somebody, to, somebody, to, somebody told me to put it, uh, the, the rusted shit in front. You know what I mean? Then it's it going to keep matter. falling if off. You just it's push, raggedy. If you just push one rusted buggy, it's hard to fucking push. Right. Just one. You trying to push down 20. Yeah, I'm pushing like a bunch of car- carts and then it's like the shit raggedy. So so like it's slowing down my shit. You know what I mean? And then, like I said, imagine doing all that. with. Man, you got to take that. You got to get that, you know, like if it was me, I wouldn't put the, the uh, rusted one in the lineup. The rusted one gotta be a side by itself, or I just like I'll come back to that one and then just put the ones with the good wheels in the line. Though. That's the issue, though. It ain't just one rusty cart. Yeah. It's a bunch of them shits. Exactly. What happened was we actually got new carts last year. I was happy as fuck. Yeah. So we but, put so so okay, and I love management, but damn, I don't understand y'all thinking sometimes. We put the the bad carts in the back. You know what I'm saying? We just picked out the ones that was bad and put them all in the back. Well, a bunch of people came out and did it. Put them all in the back. And then uh, one of the managers decided to bring all the raggedy carts back. Instead of throwing them away, they brought the broken carts back. So we got... We still got the new carts, but now they mixed in with all oh, these yeah. raggedy ass yeah. carts. Yeah. Just imagine what I go through when he have caffeine. This motherfucker don't want to help me. Now I'm being told to narrow it down to 10 carts. I narrow it down to 10 carts. I can't even get in the building without somebody snatching this shit going, thank you. You know what I'm saying? It's shit like that. It's like... And I only... You know, I see the customer perspective, too. They coming in. I'm a customer. I, I go to Walmart. You know, I'm looking for a buggy. Ain't no buggies inside. They all outside. That's why you bring them inside. So what they do? Ain't no buggies. They snatching one from you. Because right. ain't nowhere else to get one. Exactly. But it, but they coming across as rude as fuck. But they in a hurry. No, sometimes they just be rude as fuck. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I do be blurting shit out. I can't help it sometimes. <laughs> I can't help it. 
And I don't give a fuck if I get rolled up sometimes. It's like, nah, man. Because people can't be this dumb, though. You know what I mean? I'm, I, they can be. It's possible. There's dumb parents out here. But at the end of the day, it's like, nah, man. You know, I ain't just going to let you live and feel like you cool because you did that shit. I'm going to insult the fuck out of you. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to move on about my life. And it ain't even just the insult because it's with the truth. I say, I just tell well, the truth. At least you got an outlet. Like, you, know, you know what I, I mean? I don't have an outlet. You know, it's like... Like, you know, I, I be thinking shit, you know, but it's just like my real revenge is just like to tell you about your ass. And when that, you know, when, when, when DJ had called me this morning and said what he said, which honestly, I don't know what the fuck he said, but I know what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? Because over the phone, it was just like, that's how it was. <laughs> but he was saying like, man, you got to hurry up because, you know. Like, you know, like we, I don't know, like he wanted me to hurry up. And that's really all I heard. And I don't, like, don't rush me. And, like, what the fuck you want me to do? Like, no, when you at the stop sign and there's cars and shit coming, sometimes it's a whole shitload of cars because it's early in the morning, motherfuckers trying to go to work. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, what the fuck? You know? And he be talking about motherfuckers, <laughs> like, taking too long to go get their truck. Like, I ain't take a fucking long time at all. Like, damn, like, it's crazy, dog. That's just what get, you know, and we experience the same shit. Inconsiderate ass people, you know what I mean? That just don't think. and rude. Right. And and disrespectful. And then when you get on their ass, they want to make you feel like the enemy. Yeah, exactly. That's why I don't no. say shit. That's, what, that's the reason why I can't say nothing. Because my job too fucking good for me to ruin it because of my big ass mouth. Hell nah. And they always like, oh, yeah, you should, you, you ought to speak up more. I know you got something to say. Nope. I even did it in front of them today. Zip. I ain't saying a motherfucking thing. Hell no, nah, because I'd get myself in a whole lot of trouble if I told you what I really thought. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Justin Podcast with D-Matic still. Don't, 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 don't let the uh, rants fool you. Yeah, um, I told you this is going to go anywhere. Yeah, you know, it's just, you know, I, I, today was Friday. We both, Friday. We both dealt with our own yeah. different perspectives of idiots. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man. I mean, we, it was all good yesterday. If we recorded this last night, and we ain't have to work today. It would have been a completely different podcast. It would have. We would have talked more about my life, not about this bullshit we experienced. But you know, you know, you know, I feel like to me, Trunks, this podcast right here shows that we are best friends because you know, I mean, here two guys, we shooting the shit, we talking that real shit about yeah. real life, and that's just the way it is. Nah, my thing is this: I don't know what's gonna happen Sunday. I just know that Jerry. Is like heavily addicted probably to the Zeke will. He on the pills. I, you know, like, I don't want to ever reach that level. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the pills, what's the difference between the pills and the liquid? I don't know. So I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think he, he be keeping track of how many dosages of that shit he take, though. Yeah, but I mean, because I, he, not Trunks, I heard you say, it's like, man, I'm going to need an extra bit. And he probably on that same level, like, one pill or two or three that don't work for him. I'll just let you know. I'll just let you know, all right? Sometimes, sometimes it's like uh, it's like how I watched this documentary on heroin years ago. It's like how they say like some batch, batches of that Z, well, it don't be it, right? You know what I'm saying for real? Like it's I, like no, I can see that, right? It's It'll like you watered down. Yeah, it's like you drink the shit, and it's like like it's what like is what thing. it's supposed to do? It's supposed to like really warm your body. Like you're yeah. supposed to feel warm, and that warm it's mm-hmm. called. That's why I say warm and berry on the front, cause it it warms you, and and you and it gives you this like soothing. Yeah, and and then you just doze off. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's, that's why I say I just play. Is. I play F and K or whatever the fuck, and then you know what I'm saying, laugh and <laughs> shit. Right, right. <laughs> Knock the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like, you know, like like you just know. You know what I'm saying? And and that's why I don't like going to this public getting a Zeke will. Like it, it's not the same shit. It's Man, not you got that batch. Hell nah. Like it's like you know sometimes it's kind of it tastes watery. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's watered down. They right. That, 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 that's the the proof is in the pudding. I'm telling you though, that shit just tastes like water because I don't feel nothing warm. It just feel like it's, it's just down. water. It's, it's you know what out. I mean? Right. It got the but color, it still be the same price. It's fourteen ninety nine for that's the two pack. That's good. I'm telling you, like that's just the, the the way of the world. Like why wouldn't they do that, Trunks? To make the, to make more money? Why wouldn't they they take? It's like man, you know this shit working on, but we giving away. This shit, you know what I'm saying? It's right. like, and they like, like how many people is buying this shit? So we might as well cut it. That, that's that's the dope game. You that's the, that's the drug game. I'm part of the drug game. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, you know, and then and, and, and I was gonna allude to saying like I don't know what's gonna happen Sunday. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I thank Jerry work. You know, they always work. I do this good that they know that I don't need help. Like like that's what management feel like. They know I need help because I can push a lot. You know what I'm saying? And and they just they they know I don't need no help. But it's like when it's Jerry, like when he got to close, like Noel will have ten to seven. You know what I'm saying? He get off at seven, so he got somebody to help him close, or he'll work like you know, eleven to nine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they know you know like, and and Jerry been doing it longer than me. You know, and I don't want to ba- I don't want to seem like I'm bashing him. You know what I'm saying? It's just that, you know, man, you see what condition he be showing up in sometimes. Even though Will said the shit, it's like he just be showing up like, you know what I'm saying? He all like messed up. And then like, say say, say he worked 2 to 11 the last night. I come in 8 to 5 the next day. It's carts all over the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Because he didn't close properly. He didn't put them on the side. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he don't even be setting up, like putting the shits inside the corrals. By the way, we got a whole lot more corrals now. I'm happy as fuck about that shit. Oh, yeah. We got a lot. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn. That 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 that's helpful. It's fuck. That's super helpful. Like that mean I ain't gotta travel to Publix, you know what I'm saying, as much. You know what I'm saying? That's real cool. But uh it's just gonna be harder to close cause I think we got like ten or some corrals. We had three. You know what I'm saying? So that means it's just I'm going to have to go here to get cards, go here, go way the fuck back here just to put them on the side of the building. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. It's You know, it, it's a good job, though. Like, I'm not, I don't want people thinking I'm complaining. It's just, it's just certain shit that come with it. It's the rude motherfuckers I deal with. Like, I really don't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? This portion of Justin's podcast is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. It's no risk and all reward, ladies and gentlemen. Get your first month of the two, four, or six blade razor with just one dollar with free shipping. Can you believe that? It's free. I mean, you know, they'll they'll ship a full cassette of cartridges every month for as little as three dollars after that. And you can cancel any time with just a few clicks. How it works? Well, it's a better shave delivered. Cartridges arrive every month for a few bucks so that you can pop on a fresh blade anytime you want. Whatever works for you. Every month, every other month, pause anytime. Once you're in the club, you in control. You can cancel anytime. No contracts, no long-term commitments. You can leave the club in just a few clicks. Seriously, we should make it harder. Yeah, that's what they say. Seriously, we should make it all. Fuck you too. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get more convenient. We make and deliver grooming products you need to look and feel and shave like a million bucks. All delivered in one monthly box. That's a Dollar Shave Club. It's a better way to shave. Ah, ah. Justin's Podcast. And you know, then they get mad. They're like, I, like it'd be stupid people that come in. Like, look, look at him. He's just listen. He just has his headphones on. You know what I mean? Mad as fuck. And I'm like, how the fuck are you mad at me listening to music? You know what I mean? And they be racist motherfuckers. Black chocolate. <laughs> no, no, no. Dark chocolate. No, burn chocolate. That's what that bitch said. Somebody called you that? No, no. She called the uh the girl that you know what I'm the, saying. The but, cashier. Nah, it, it's called, I forgot what they called, but 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 the she called line? it that. She no, nah, I forgot what she called, but 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 she called it that. She was like, "You made me cry, burn chocolate." <laughs> I went outside and laughed so hard. That's well, you know, I, I be, I be. I'm sorry. Nice. Hurry up, burn chocolate. The head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bobblehead, a racist ass bobblehead. Burn chocolate. I like you talk. I be seeing racism like right up front, right up in front of me. Yeah. And it always just made me laugh. I never get offended by racism. I don't either. Maybe there's something wrong with me. But what I happened wonder with the you? same thing. No, I just experienced it. Like, um, like I see, I don't know. Like, I just, I can't remember the situation, but I just remember something had happened. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was um, 
because uh, you know it's this kid uh, at my job. His name Ricky, and he Mexican. And it's just the other, the ugly, uh, uh, the ugly pterodactyl looking motherfucker, Clannard. Is that when he said, "Hey, Negro"? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that shit just made my ass laugh like a motherfucker, dog. Because he always saying, "Hey, Mexican," and then, and then the Mexican like, finally hey, done. Yeah, hey, Negro. <laughs> Finally, that's the key word. The it's a Spanish back. guy. It's a Spanish guy at my job that be doing that shit. He be like, that's, he was like, he be getting mad when people be be talking to him a certain way, and sometimes he'll just get mad and he'll go, "That nigga." I laugh. <laughs> what else do you do? Exactly. What, do you do? what the fuck was that? I'm supposed to be offended by this motherfucker going, "That nigga," <laughs> slobbing and shit all over the place. I wonder about that type of shit, trucks. You know, I don't think that I'm the most normal motherfucker in the world by no means I, I couldn't be cause my mind too fucked up and I know that so but 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 I, I wonder like what like like how in the hell do certain people do shit like, like okay I'll, I'll give you an example I was listening to this story about Harley Race, right? Vader was saying this. He was saying, you know, because Harley Race was his manager. And so, you know, but... Yeah. You know, really, really, you know, it was kind of like fucking Harley Race was the star and Vader was the backup guy because Race used to have him doing all kind of shit. Like, you know, Race would like, you know, he'd be smoking a cigarette and he'd have his hand like this and they'll be drinking a beer, you know what I mean? And, like, he'll just drink it in one chug, like, and Vader will be standing next to him, and he had to fucking, like, pop the fucking, he had to keep on popping beer cans open and, like, have them, like, so by the time Race do, done, done this shit and then emptied the can and tossed it out, by the time he put his hand down, Vader better than already had a can in his hand and the fucking uh, the open part, hmm. like facing his mouth, so that he can just come back up and just drop it in his mouth. And it's like, how the fuck do you be like that? And how the fuck do you justify it? Because to me, we the kind of people that's just humble. Like you, like you know what I'm saying. Like you'll let the motherfuckers go first. But I feel like a motherfucker like Harley Race will try to run the motherfuckers over. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, how the hell do you be like that? And I just start to think about it. I start to think about just the dynamic of just the whole entire world. Because Trunks, you know, that's that, like, really, that's all XTV is. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it fascinated me. That's why it intrigued me. It's like, like, like all these different types of characters, you know, that, that got all these different backgrounds. And it's just like, damn, it just, it's just to me, I don't know, man. I, it's just so fucking fascinating just looking at all these different people, all these different stories. And, like, when they tell, they, like, when a person tell their story, it makes sense. But when you're going through these encounters, it's like, don't what the no fuck is wrong like, with why you? Why do you do that? Like, you know, but but over here on the West Coast, that's why Killer's uh, story is so fascinating, you know, the inside at the studio, because it's like, it's amazing, like like when you really look at him, like he really was the underdog. You know what I'm saying? He really he didn't have shit. So it's like a lot of times when you don't have shit, you feel like you don't have shit to lose. You know what I mean? You don't give a fuck. You you don't limit yourself to giving a fuck about anything. That's why you know a lot of those FMKs that we did, like a lot of them was controversial because of kill. Like he would say shit. He wouldn't do shit. You know what I mean? And it was like you can't do that. Like we have a. Uh, episode just named nigga the AIDS episode I think it's just it just say AIDS episode because he he he, he talked about easy you know what I'm saying and it was like whoa like even and I heard this shit cause I forgot about this recording and I finally put it on my damn computer in like 2012 and I think I had recorded, like I had immediately recorded, cause I ain't hear it in a long time. And I recorded. I just, I said, I just want to apologize to the family, of Easy. E. Like I had to, man, cause it's just like, damn, I said that. You gotta understand, we was loose in 07. We didn't give a fuck. Like, you know, it, it was one of those things where 
when society ain't giving you no opportunity and all you really feel that you can do is record, you going to really record, you know what I'm saying? And you going to go in. It's like, damn, this is I can say what I want. I can do what I want. And you feel invincible. You know what I'm saying? We was trying to get jobs when we got out of high school. We was applying at Walgreens. I was thinking about this earlier today. All the shit we applied to once we got out of high school and how many, like, we didn't even get interviews for nothing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't until Bush Gardens. That's 2010. I got out of school in 06. You know? Yeah. So it's like all that shit, you know, it, it, it builds up. You know what I mean? And like, yeah, we talked to Bill. We talked to y'all. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when you break it down, man, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really have a, a strong, like, like people to really talk to us about certain shit to help us grow through certain things. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, the stuff we went through was just like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this keep happening, you know? And, and, and the more, more it happened, the more you record, the more angry you get, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, for some reason with F and K, I always noticed this through all our anger, we didn't try to be funny, but that shit be coming out hilarious, dog. It be coming out like, damn, that's funny. You know what I'm saying? Because it's more of a creative outlet. We doing something with it. You know, it ain't just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it got old after a while. 2012, again, FNK should not have existed that long. Not the 2012. We you did so, so much. Hell no. We did so much more, like, at that point. We right. did so much that's just like, you know, that was a good way, but it's the way of old compared to 2012. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a long run, eight years. Yeah. yeah. It lasted longer than HY. Right. HY lasted four years. I know? wonder about that. Now, I think about that sometimes, like, the fact that, you know, some like, times that we're not even trying, but... When you go back, like you know, on on record on some recordings, for instance, that I thought, man, eh, probably ain't really that much of a big deal. You go back and listen to that shit. Once you don't forgot about it, it's the funniest shit you ever heard. Why do y'all think that we just now about to animate this Halloween thing? We did this shit in 2012. You know what I'm saying? We heard this because we thought we lost it, but we found it, you know, looking through that big ass hard drive. And then I, I, I don't I can't stop laughing. Like, it's, it's one of them things. I can't stop laughing. It's like, yeah. damn, it's, yeah. it got detail on it. It got Keller. It got Ada, Chantel and everybody like they play a big part, though. It's not like they just there. They there. They like J right. baby. They it, all important. Yeah. And they all playing a big part. And it's 29 minutes long. You know what I'm oh, saying? Right, and it's XTV West. It's like, and, and if you really understand 2012, like, over here, we wasn't feeling it. That's why Grandpa Joe kind of, you know, he did a little shoot on uh, 2012. He talked about it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, he mentioned that. It was like, you know, the, the stuff that was supposed to work just really didn't work. Like, Miami beat down, that was supposed to be grand. That was supposed to be epic. You know, me fighting William William. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. I wasn't supposed to lose. I really wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was playing was playing as me. Like, I wasn't supposed to lose. Like, I was supposed to beat him and it was supposed to be cool. But just everything that was happening, you know what I'm saying? It just wasn't, it, wasn't, it was homestay at beat down, Justin, like, as Grandpa Joe put it. You know what I'm saying? And, man, it just wasn't that fun, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like really, like, like we was. I watched Hardcore House the other day. I love Horrible. I don't know. Hardcore House? I hate Hardcore crazy. House. You crazy? I hate hardcore. I'm gonna do a. House. I'm gonna me and Terry uh, Terry Williams gonna get together. We gonna we gonna talk about hardcore house on my podcast. Well, Justin, you know, just just I'm tell me in, in a brief, you know, description. Hardcore house, and, you know, and, and, like I ain't even finished with it. They had these epic matches, and you know, I, you know, because you know there, there was this feud building up between Charles Dean and the Ages guy. Right. And you know, you guys just don't understand. You know, some guys from the West Coast. You know, and in, in, in terms of you know recognition on the on the East Coast are just so over. And you know, to me, you know, you know, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. But the problem, the, the the two most over guys on the West Coast, you know, when you talk about like when it come into the in ring, at the time, '80s guy and Charles Dean, a match made in heaven. This was supposed to happen, and the story that they told in the 15 minute Iron Man match, you know, of course that's what. Is what will happen, you know. 
you know, and 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 the match is so good that um, I can't even tell who's who you is. I don't know if you're the '80s guy and you fighting this from this deficit. Don't tell me, or if you Charles Dean and you just kicking the computer's ass because the way the way the '80s guy fights back. You know what I mean? After taking several F5s and Faz pointed it out on the announcing, you know what I mean? Like, this was during a time period where, where Faz was being, you know, introduced on, on, the announce, on the announce table, you know. I, I particularly like Faz in that position, you know what I'm saying? He did a good job. You know, he was coming in and out, you know, throughout the whole pay-per-view, but when it was main event time, he held his position, you know what I mean? You know, you bounced well with best, you know what I mean? Y'all, y'all the veterans. And you know, so you know, you know, y'all, y'all kept everything in perspective, and you know, you know, you know, you just pointed out how Aegis got continued to fight back, and you know, like, and you know, you watching this, and and he getting his ass kicked, and you gotta remember, Trunks, this '06, you know what I'm saying? You know, the game '06, and 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 to me, you know, '06 was probably the realest XTV has ever been, you know, you know, ever. Like, like this is the tale of the tape. This is how it really is. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, you know, Aiden's guy kept on. He, he kept on fighting, but you know, Dean beat. You know, he he pinned him. Um, you know, he got he got the first few falls. He got like four falls over him. Then Aiden's guy, um, <clears throat> he he came back because he will give you a show, <laughs> and he does it every time. And you know, it it it, it kind of goes back to what what Bob said about Aiden's. Excuse me. <clears throat> It go back to what Bob was saying about eighties in, in the beginning, which was what originally put him over, you know. And he he mentioned that when he talked to me on on, on uh, when I interviewed him once before, he was saying, you know, he's like, you know, Bob said he always get his ass kicked, but damn it, he yeah. give you the best show on the fucking card, you know. And 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 it's true. <clears throat> and and here it is, the main event, the two biggest guys, the two most over guys on the West Coast, you know, they main event, fifteen minute marathon, you know. And uh, '80s guy, he he didn't win, but but his comeback, yeah. his comeback meant so much, and he got him with that chin music, and he didn't knock him out, but he got him for that pin, and he got that one. So 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 it wasn't a complete blowout, but Charles Dean inevitably, you know, show he, he his his dominance showed and proved. You know, I just want to <laughs> you know talk about that because like it, that ain't it though. That's just was that the main event that night. Yeah, but 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 whoever uh, because there was ODD and Killer. Yeah, I gotta go back and watch that. There was Dixie and um Dixie yeah. and Miss Pac Man. Miss Pac Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dixie yeah, and Miss yeah. Pac Man because because Dixie was on a rampage. You know, she had just and Dixie was uh she was a free agent at the time, and Dixie uh you know she had just beat Ada, which was a huge deal, and she beat beat somebody else that was important. A, a very important person on the West Coast. I can't remember. And now, here she is. She's gonna wrestle up against Miss Pac Man, which was another great match on that card. You know, just, I'm just, I'm, just, 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 you know, uh, because yeah, you know, the the um the shoot interview Joe, Joe did isn't uploaded, but we just felt like you know we could have went a lot harder, man. It's like that's the best way to put it. Uh, yeah. You know, like, 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 I'm finna be real about that shit, though, man. It's like in 2012, we just like, like, like it's, it's kind of like what, what we say, like when we listen to y'all brain shit, we like, man, you dead desert, and it's epic to us. But you always say, oh man, I could have went harder, I could have went harder. It's the same way with us, though. It's like, you know, yeah, we went to Miami, we shot all that footage, you know what I'm saying, and, and then actually, where did Hardcore like, House take place? Hardcore House, we was at the house. Oh. You know what I'm saying? We, it was gonna be Hardcore Hotel because we were gonna be at a hotel, but it's just like. We should have made proper preparations to really do the shit that we was trying to do. Yeah. Action in Orlando should have been in Orlando. It was supposed to be action in Atlanta. We should have went to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? We should have planned this shit better. Yeah. You know, and then it's like the final product, not to disgrace it or nothing like that, but it's like we know we could have did better. Like, like you know what I'm saying? That's good, but we know us when we really put some shit together and then put it out, it could be the greatest shit ever. Like the Cosby Show was like that. That's why that's like that's literally to me thus far the best thing I have ever did in my life. Well, you know Cosby's, what I mean? The second one. Yeah. Period. Is that it? Yeah. Because it's like that it's, was something it, it that shows. I wasn't gonna even do that shit. Like I, I like that was just something so I was just thinking about. Like I'm yeah. like you know, and I started all small. I remember working on this shit. I'm just like you know, 
Uh, I guess I just, you know, put killer right there, you know, just to look like I'm doing something. Oh, well, let me just get her. Oh, I wonder what clothes she should wear. And the shit just started coming, like, yeah. Oh, it was such a fucked up year, but shit just kept coming to me, man. It was just like coming to me fast, too. It's like well, if I would type something in that I want Rudy to wear, it's like it just popped up. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even have to really works. search it. It's like, this is meant to be. And it was during the time of 2011 where shit was bad. Shit was fucked up. You know what I mean? Like, our AC was cut off and our electric was cut off. And I did that shit and when I finished it, I was just like, I was smiling, to me, you smiling, know, smiling, 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 smiling. Well, you know, you know what? I, I wonder, like, uh, like, what's the time period that it took from the beginning all the way to the end? February of 2011 to October. Oh, yeah? Getting kicked so out the house. Like, like, what, nine months? Maybe eight or nine months? Yeah. You know, getting kicked out the house, getting the electricity cut off, getting the internet cut off, the computer having a virus. Yeah. <laughs> you put all that shit in perspective and you're just doing and this and, one and thing that's just funny. it's amazing. It's amazing that it's, it's even around. Right. It's amazing I still had the pictures to this day. You know what I'm saying? All the pictures of each scene. And I can tell you what was going on on every scene. Like that part when he and Kmart, we yeah, was yeah. playing Tupac. Him and Wills. Yeah, we was playing Tupac. Uh, we played, uh, we was playing uh, Me Against the World, a whole album. And we was sad as fuck. Like as sad as you can get probably. You know what I mean? Like, we was depressed because, like, just shit wasn't going right. But we was having so much fun. Like, it's like, man, I hate life, man. <laughs> that shit. Man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It, it was Those like moments, man. And, you know, and, then, you know, it's like, to me, it's like, you know, to do the right thing. And it's like, we would, we would get on set sometimes. And it's like, you know, sometimes y'all wouldn't be there. You ain't woke yet. So we just go back there and we just start. We just play the fucking behind the scenes, you know what I mean, and just get into it. Like before, we actually start animating. I was like, we got so deep into that, you know what I'm saying, that we actually learned like more about the movie, you know what I mean, and just like all the all the intricacies that behind the scenes, just to make our product better. You know, it was so deep. Like that's, and I don't think that we ever went there since. And I just. And I'll just tell you, like, Jungle Fever, like, you know what I'm saying? Because that came first. Like, we worked on that first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, like... Right, 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 right. But then, don't get me wrong. It's not that that shit wasn't fun. But, yeah, damn, so did fucking, I have to fucking work. Tedious. Shit. Well, the thing that oh was accomplished God. on that, though, was just, like, you know, mind-blowing. And, it, and you know, I have said this once before. This like, what was accomplished on Jungle Fever was, you know, a vision that we had. Yeah. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? To I be able to take yeah, yeah. yeah, like to take, you know, it's like damn, but it's like so tedious to keep this face on his head while he moving and make his mouth move, you know, like like you know, we were saying like when when Walt eating right there, you know, with uh That with scene Snooki. was tough and that scene was fun though. That's like one of my, my favorite, favorite scene, scenes. I haven't said it, the round table. You know, and I can't believe I, that I, shit because I didn't no, know how you was going to take it. Because I remember, I'm just happy that you was able to accomplish it because, you know, it's bootleg as hell along mm-hmm. with the rest of the movie, which is what makes it work. You know, and, and that's and then uh, another one of my favorite scenes is the, uh, the fucking, the one that made me pop the hardest out of everything <laughs> is the fucking scene with uh, his wife throwing shit at him. Oh yeah! Oh my that god! That made me pop so hard in the airport. The part where he had got hit, he was like, "Oh, oh!" Took us upstairs. Yeah, the new upload and shit. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's because, a new one. because, and that's when the incident happened. Right. Like after that, the incident yeah. happened because Chantel, her vocals was funny as hell. Like we used to just be back there, like ah, her shit was funny because she was she was in that scene too. She was going off, and her shit was like. Funny as hell. How come it cut on? Who knows? It's letting you know you talk too much. Man, hey, get your ass out of here. But anyway, get up, man. Like, like up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we was just uh, we was dying at that shit, man. And um, that's when the incident happened, though. Like, we lost all that shit. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I remember like that shit really fucked with me, dog. Like like you was at Jetstream or some shit, so I couldn't talk to you about it. And all all, all that was there was our mom, and it was just like, damn. She can feel you. Right, you know what I'm saying? I just went outside, man. I think that's when I played Poe out of Look a Little Look about Tupac and cried. Well, you know what I'm saying? What that song sad for you? Yeah, it's tied into a bad memory. Bros, I'm back. We're still rolling with the new Millennium Podcast. I am not dead, and the show keeps on going. All new season of the new Millennium Podcast, and this time, guys, there's no breaks. That's right, no pauses, just interviews with some of your favorite stars from all over XTV, and you never know who I might bring in on the outside. My next, uh, my next guest, it's actually going to be Todd. Yeah, bro, uh, it's the one that, you know, you've been waiting for. The one that I've been waiting for, and he's super cool, bro. It's such a super fun interview, and he's right here on the next episode of the New Millennium Podcast. Song free, ad free, just straight talking with your favorite stars. So check it out, bros. It's the New Millennium Podcast. And I was fucked up though. Like I was like, I was really like. I know that feeling though, man. That's how I felt though, man. You know, I, I hate to bring it up, but like that was that feeling though. With, with, with and doing I used right to kind of hear that in my voice, like this is what you did to your brother. I, yeah, you, I know you know what I'm talking about, and it's like that shit, like take your soul away, because it's like all, you know, at the time, it was all I had. It was, it was the, it was all, you know. That's what Redman was talking about with MC Hammer. He had said that, like, you know, he's, he had a skit on his first album dissing MC Hammer. MC Hammer had to see him about that shit. Like, he said, Hammer don't be bullshitting, though. <laughs> like, he said that he came up to him. He was like, don't be talking about my mama, man, all right? You got me? Officer Neil shit. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, um, because you take what you do serious. Like, no matter how many times I talk about Drake album or whoever, you know, hot and, and I don't really mess with them like that. It's like I don't know what they really going through with their music. It is all they have, you know what I'm saying? And what the hell was that? It's just this. Oh. And that's you know, they, they probably don't got much resources and with what they got they make whatever they can and it's epic for them because it's day release. You know what I'm saying? So you know, like like I like artists but that don't mean I have to always like their art. You know what I'm saying? But I don't always understand where shit come from. You know, and uh, that's why I'm I'm very defensive on art that I see is good, groundbreaking, because I like shit that's different. You know what I'm saying? And I hate when people diss it because some artists, you know what I mean, they, they don't take that shit well. You know what I'm saying? And they be insecure. Now they don't do music. And who could have been the best artist of all time ain't the best because somebody wanted to diss them and say whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know. I think I'm just ranting. Well, you gotta push through, you know, you, you push through that type of shit, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I, I'm glad, so, so y'all like that walk thing, yeah, that shit is funny, man. Hell yeah, I ain't no funny that. That's funny. That shit's epic, Dennis, that shit's classic, and, you know. But that's why I followed by that, I'm sorry, just hold that, hold that. But that's why I followed by that one scene where, where I talk, and then I had to turn my vocals up super loud, because I'm like, Oh, the scene with um Miss Ruby in there. Yeah, and then it's like like I love that scene like like we praying and shit, and I'm all I'm all low. We praying. <laughs> I hate that scene. I'm sorry, but just cause of that though, it's like, why the hell wasn't I talking loud? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't say no mm-hmm like that, just. But uh, yeah. Don't tell me not to say mm-hmm like that. Just then. People out there. <laughs> Trust, I got something that I want to talk about with you. What I was, but what I was gonna say about the do the right thing was the, um, you know, that that walk scene was, uh, you know, when they, uh, you know, that, that part that I said that I like. Yeah, yeah. It shows the the progression of, you know, and, and it just shows how you got into a groove. You know what I mean? Because the the artwork became more crispy. Exactly, cause that early scene when the girl was like just woke up and she was supposed to be laughing. Wait a baby. Ah! <laughs> what you was gonna say though, Justin? I was gonna talk about Vessel of Shea. Vessel of Shea Brown. Now, you, you know, you, you you automatically feel some type of way when that name is mentioned. But it has to be a point in time where when she was introduced, 
She had to be the apple of your eye. Walk us through the beginning and the end of the relationship of Trunks and Beth Lachey Brown. Don't say she the apple of my eye. She was eye candy. Now I wish I never did her. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I can't act face. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Beth Lachey is just something we just, I don't know, it just made sense. You know what I'm saying? It's just something we just kind of came up with. It's like, damn, because this this when the big trunk shit was still going on. I'm like, damn, if I'm a 70s dude, like, like what if I had a manager? My manager would be a girl, Beth Lachey. You know what I'm saying? Beth Lachey? Yeah. That's the name? Yep. And then, because Soup just be coming up with shit. Like, he's like, okay, it's the 70s. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? He thinking of different names. And Beth Lachey just come up. You know, and, uh, shit, um, we just always argue, man. She always got something to say. I think it was really from, we trying to be like that Robin Harris DVD too, though. Uh, <laughs> like, like, I don't think you ever seen it. I think we got it somewhere in there. But it's like, he, he, he had a, a girl he used to play Probably off was. of. Yeah, yeah, he had a girl he used to play off of. And she used to be like, you are such a dog, Robin. Well, if I'm a dog, such a son. And he'll say some funny shit. And they was like back and forth. It was like a tag team. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably where it came from now that I yeah. think about it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, Beth, love. Yeah. So, you know? so, so she she was never a, a love interest or nothing like that. Yeah, 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 though. Like, you know, because we went together. We was a couple, but we always argued. Like, that, but, 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 but we did love each other. It's just like every time the camera on, she went at different. Man. You know, I was like I said, I was listening to Hardcore House, and you know, it sounded like you was trying to bring in a new lady. I, I, I want to say her name was Renisha. I don't remember, man. Yeah, I like, like see, 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 and that's another Y'all thing. Y'all did something because she, she had came up, and you was like, "Thank you," and then you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I said, uh, like, "Who's that, Trunks?" Oh, that's nah. Like, he was like, uh, "That's uh, that's." That's a new girl that's coming. That's Trunks. Uh, she involved with Trunks or something like that. You know, it's just man, like, like, like again, going back to 2012. It's like certain ideas. It's just like they just didn't work. Like, like we was forcing shit. You know what I mean? And and Joe, he said that shit. It's like it's true. Like we was forcing shit. Like we were forcing rookies to come in. Like we just, oh yeah, this is the new girl. Oh well, you know, like we didn't even properly introduce her. You know what I'm saying? So so she really wasn't real. It was just something we just did on the spot. You know what I'm saying? It was something we just put out there, like, and we didn't do nothing with it. We didn't capitalize on no new ideas. Like, that's what made that shit such a bad year to me. Like, cause it's like we didn't try. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I can honestly say that shit. Like, we didn't try as hard as we could have tried to do certain things. You know, and and I think the reason we didn't try is cause we was getting too distracted. But what the fuck y'all was doing? Y'all to us. Y'all was like funny the bricks, you know what I'm saying? Like that to us when you did that, it was just like damn, you know what I'm saying? And then I don't know for whatever reason we just wasn't feeling it that year. Like we was listening to our old shit and just like man, how come we can't do it like that? And then we tried to you know be like how we used to be at one point, and we wasn't progressing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't it wasn't a natural progression. In 2012, we was just forcing ideas like, hopefully this worked, hopefully that worked. You know what I mean? Right. And you know, like, like yeah, she she was probably supposed to be something, but I don't even know. It's just like we did that on the spot. You know what I mean? And we didn't. Really, oh, that was on the spot. Yeah, it wasn't something we was thinking about. It was no, just, it's just like you always been involved with some kind of a female. You know, kind of like uh, type of like thing. like who, what, what ninety it? didn't mention uh, number one through a uh, hundred. I used to have a bunch of girls. One was named number one and number two, and number yeah, three. Yeah, see, it always four, like little silly shit. I remember that <laughs> you did that one time on XTV TV. We was out there. We was just playing the game in twenty twenty in twenty ten. I think it was, and you was just like you just blurted out. I was like, uh, maybe later number five. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. I used to do stuff like that. Like, yeah. lady number two. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, ninety nine. I don't know. Wait, X, X one hundred. Oh, you is one hundred. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. that's what I love about it. Though. That like, used to yeah. be fun, though. That shit used to be fun. <laughs> but, but that's that's another thing we was doing with my character, though. Like, cause back in 07 like you know when I was the pimp still it's like that was the element we added like damn you know how about we introduce his girls what we gonna name them number one two three four <laughs> you know what I'm saying 
Yeah. And uh, like yeah, it was just something stupid we yeah. used to do. Perfect timing. <laughs> Random ass numbers. You know. Hold on, sixty six. Damn. <laughs> Ain't got no money on me. <laughs> I might bring it back. Who knows? Yeah. Then you dealt with Jalissa at one point. Jalissa. You had a girl named Jalissa, didn't you? Jalissa. Thought you had a Jalissa. Wait, know, the wait. The girl that was like, you're so nasty. You no, said, no, no, no. That, that was that was killer. Killer. Well, Ada. That was Ada. She used to always talk about killer. She was always saying he was so nasty because he used to do nasty stuff. But when me and Ada was working on Can His Family Live Without Drama, you know what I'm saying? We was thinking about that at work too. Like, we really love that scene we uploaded. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. dog, man, let me just let you know that scene is perfect. I'm going to go back and watch it. Oh my God. Like, the way I made the truck leave. The, the, our oh, chemistry like was just on point. Like me and Ada, like that's one thing, you know. We always wanted to put out is is that we always like when we together, man. For some reason, it just worked. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like you believe us. Like even though I'm old as hell and she young, yeah. you know, listening but to the audio, you rooting for me. playing roles. We know that you trucks and you, but the world don't know your backstory. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. And so that's what make it work. You know what I mean? It's like, and like that's what I love about it. Cause, like, when they do pop, they not gonna get the part that we see first. They gonna just see whatever it is. Like, okay, this guy and that guy, and they playing as, you know, he, she, she's playing as Kim, and he playing as him. No, nah, they gonna be like Trunks is like, how come that guy in draws? That's what they gonna ask. Well, you ain't got what draws? Like, I'm no, saying, I'm already in draws on the uh, scene. I'm saying like it's like this, like, I, and I and I, and I might have mentioned this before. It's like. Back in oh four, you know, if my memory serves me correct, we had this idea of like, what if it was like, instead of okay, Jennifer Lopez plays as Peggy, or in this movie she plays as Mia, or in this movie she plays as Whitney, you know what I'm saying? What if in XTV, Yosi is being Jennifer Lopez in Money Train, or Yosie has been Tisha Campbell and House Party. You see right. what I'm saying? And so like that's like like that was the idea. You know what I'm saying? Like that was like so that's that's what captured the audience because Yosie she still get her character over. She's always Yosie, but now she Yosie doing this or she Yosie doing that or it's ninety doing this or ninety doing that. You know what I mean? That's what that was supposed to be though. Can't the same with our drama. Like like Ada was physical on that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Yeah. But you know it was hard for us doing that recording because it's like it's like a fake. It's like because we kept calling her Ada. Go ahead. It's intriguing to me because it's like these actresses play fictitious characters. Now it's the, the fictitious characters playing as actresses. Exactly, and, and they cartoons. What, and that's what I love about it. Like that was the idea. I was mm-hmm. never able to explain that until now. But uh, I just hope that we can finish Kenneth's family a little bit without drama. But it's really hard to find a horse running by itself. And I just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't got gifts or horses just like this. Yeah, but it'd be too slow. And we no, you can make it. And you know what else they got? What? Fucking um, stencils like, you know, like horse like this. You should type in horse. Um, what's the shit's called? What are they called? Like the storyboards, what are they fucking called? I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know what the fuck it's called, but I know what you're talking but about. Yeah, yeah, and so it's like here in this position, here in that position, and they cut out so you make your own horse run. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like put this one here, put that one there, put that one there, and now he running across the screen. I can't explain why we uh, specifically Just need for a exactly. horse running. Because I got a Ryu that's doing a hard duke here. But uh, um, you know, it, it's just like like we still gonna do that shit because I really feel like you know, Kenneth's family live live without drama is a very important message. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, even with super, I don't know, man. We think about that shit every day though. Like that's a project we think about every single day. You know what I'm saying? That Beavis and Butthead, the Cosby's, we think about that all the time because like the idea we came up with today made me laugh. Like, I'm like, damn, that'd be funny. But, um, you know, shit take a lot of time, you know. A lot of time, but, you know, we've been talking about finding, you know, something new 
It's, it's, it's got to be an easier way. Yeah, we just going to do like, you know, like these, we're going to do like 11 projects and then that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we still going to do Beavis and Butthead like this. I saw animation software. And I'm I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but it's like, I, I done got to the point where, like, it don't matter. Because you can use, like, if we, I feel like if we use the, uh, the WWE create a wrestler to create characters, we can use any fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? We just need a creative outlet. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, some kind of um, software where you can create your own characters and create your own worlds. Yeah, that's all you need. It's a coloring book. You know what I mean? But probably like 3D. They all the same little cookie cutter. Uh, you know, and then you can make little fat ones, skinny ones. You know, change the, do exactly like create a wrestler, but you're doing it on the fucking computer. And, and you know, you make a you make a little 10 minute mini series. You know, like, that was the idea f- to, for the foundation of the Howard show. You're like, that's how his show was going to start out. It's, it's going to be 3D, and, you know, he's he going to be put in these different situations. You know, he got the cast, you know, and then you dress it you dress it up, you dress up the house, and then, you know, that could just, like, be, like, the look for maybe, like, three different things. Then you got this other animation software that you manipulate. And it's, it's got this look, you know what I mean? But it's like make it a game again not make it work and tedious cause you know it's like it's too many ideas to try to condense and you know just like uh, these few projects you gonna always wanna do more exactly because even with the Halloween shit like I keep coming up with new ideas like you know what I'm saying it's just like I don't know like I, I really wanna just put like you know since 2014 when I did um what's that project I did Lake Skeleton. Since I did that, like, I just been on this, man. I just been creative. Like, I just been coming up with shit. Like, it don't stop ever. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I just, I'm always coming up with that. And Lake Skeleton, man, you know, that was something that was supposed to be epic. Like, that was going to be, like, that was going to be crazy as fuck. Like, that, like the ideas we had. I, I think I told you that one time when we was driving, doing doorstep, like, I had said, man, like, everything I'm doing with this project is different because it's true. Like, I said, I mentioned musically, you know what I'm saying? Like, because, like, I was going to do shit with music. I was going to make the shit sound crazy. Like, you know, I was going to use that sample that Kanye used off of Yeezus, the, uh, he'll give you what you really need. I was going to do something with that, like, because it was going to be the scene where uh, Ty getting chased, you know, and he was going to die, you know, but he was going to get chased and all this epic, crazy-ass music. And once he got stabbed, that shit was going to play. And just the way it was going to look, like, it was going to be tight as fuck. And Late Skeleton is something. That beginning scene, the the intro, yeah. I came up with that shit when I was still in that school, the Art Institute. You know, I was so bored with this assignment that we had to do where I just slowly just did that. Like, And it was just something that was just like that Cosby show. Like, it was just coming to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was just like just do this let me do that and i was just like i probably felt that uh one too it was just boring as fuck like i get that they was you know trying to find a certain curriculum or whatever the fuck but that shit wasn't fun man like it wasn't something i could sink my teeth in you know what i'm saying like i I was already like you know i was just learning about other artists which is cool you know and other art styles but it's weird, man. I just focus on what I do, man. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. Like, like this is the art style I do. And I'm influenced by, like, you know, how South Park do it. So that's why I watch their documentaries. Feel no BEP and shit. You know what I'm saying? I watch they, I watch they shit. Like, I watch they documentaries on how they did their thing. Because that's the style that I'm inspired by. And that's the style and the way that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what the dude said on Feel No BEP. He said, all I do is copy and paste. Trey Park and Matt Stone said the same shit. All we do is copy and paste. And it's like, damn, that's what I do. You know what I mean? I didn't even realize, like, that's the, that's you know, you see what I'm saying? Because I just did this shit because you showed me. And then, like, it became what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the style that I do. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I don't, you know, Andy Warhol, whoever these other different artists is. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that's good. That's dope. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it's great. But 
it's just not my style. Like, I don't paint. You know what I'm saying? I don't draw. I like it. I would hang that shit on my wall. It would be in my room, but... We wanted to get to the point where we started, you know, how, how like, yeah, well, go to create a wrestler, and then, you know, you, you create your guy or whatever, and then you, we took a picture of him, and then he'd be the little cutout. We wanted to fucking create our own, like, draw our own fucking Yaki, you know what I'm saying, from these different dimensions, you know what I'm saying, draw our own fucking big trunks. And so it, just, just to make the artwork that much more authentic and then copy paste that they say you can take a picture on uh, the new games and then like mm-hmm. your face can be the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't see the, I, I, it's, that's a cool ass effect but I don't see the use of it you know what I'm saying like cause we, I mean for us you know what I'm saying cause we creating these different characters it's like well I'm gonna find a Foxy how that hmm. you know yeah I can only make one me exactly <laughs> sitting there making faces I'm Foxy <laughs> oh <laughs> exactly <laughs> She gonna have a beard and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Foxy has a beard now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You have to get certain people. Certain things will be special though. If we can get like uh, Tommy Dreamer, just perhaps you know what I'm saying to come in, and so you know you got his face on the character. It's like, look, Tommy Dreamer, the real Tommy Ooh, Dreamer. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm the man. Get out of here. <laughs> oh man, well, Trunks, I tell you what, man, we done probably went on like two hours. Maybe an hour too long, and uh, you know we're about forty-seven. To, we're about to wrap things up here in, in a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I, I can tell you though, know, from from having this conversation with you, my best friend, my yeah. good friend, Big Trunks D. Matic, you know, I, I I already know that I'm gonna have you on many more podcasts in the future. I'm probably have you back real soon because it's, you know, I'm actually do some homework and um and, and talk about a whole lot of things that I that you know. We didn't get into. We talked about a lot of life shit, you know. Uh, real life shit. Just for real know, niggas. I, 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 well, I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, these are the types of conversations that 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 will be had anytime you on this on this show. Because, like I said, you're my best friend. I know your story, and I and it's like you done been interviewed. Why bore it? You know, everybody with, you know, what they didn't heard already. Give them something, you know, from from a different perspective. You know, a lot of people are uh, really uh. You know, like over here on the west, I should say. I don't know how y'all feel, but uh, yeah. they really uh surprised that the Grandpa Joe shit. You know that I talked about on the, uh my shoot with ninety. Yeah. When I said I was uh, it was a dude talking about something, and he had a scar on his face. Uh-huh. A lot of people just been talking about that. You know, they they wonder if I had an abusive childhood, but you know, Justin, it's hard to tell people I'm good. You know, I'm not like I I don't look at it as abuse. You know what I mean? Like like I said before, I think Grandpa Joe was just toughening us up. Because he knew what the industry had. He knew what it was going to be. And he was like trying to toughen us up early, man. I disagree. His, he, Don't disagree, nigga. You weren't there. I wasn't there. But just from the story, hearing his side, hearing your side, it's like, nigga, you was out for your damn self. You took them kids' money. <laughs> <laughs> and you lived the fucking life. You lived the fucking dream at your damn get grandkids' expense. You know, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, I mean, we all go on our high roads and our low roads. And he's an established legend. He one of those, you know, uh, just one of those guys. I I don't even know the kind of word to put on him, but he's just one of those magical kind of guys in XTV, you know. Just just look like you have a call on my phone now. Well, you know, I... I can't answer phone calls on my podcast. Want me to answer it then? No, I can't answer phone calls. You got to answer the phone. No, I don't. Nope. I think your phone ringing. My phone ain't ringing. Looks like my phone is ringing all of a sudden. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I, I don't know. Whoops, I had it on speaker too. The reason I don't remember is because he's a fat drunk motherfucker. And yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hang that phone up, Trump. Trump. Right now. Hang it up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my good friend Big Trunks. We got a lot, we got a whole lot more to talk about, but until next time, we're gonna have to end it off right here. Trunks, it's been great talking to you. Good talking to you too, Justin. All right, everybody, to get on the go home cue. Wasn't that good? You might say it was marvelous. Simply. 
Marvelous. Just two friends sitting down shooting the shit, you know. That's that's what happened, man. I told Trunks, I said, hey, man, I got this. I'm a professional. Man, that's how it is, man. I had a good-ass time. You know, I sat down, I listened back to the whole thing, and I was just sitting up there smiling, you know, just cheesing, you know, uh, just hearing us go back and forth about, um, you know, the... Uh, you know, our, our work situation and sharing our uh, different experiences there, and then you know, just you know, just talking about uh, ideas and just just everything, man. I mean, man, you know, man, that's my friend, man. I love you, Trunks. So yeah, man. You know, uh, definitely remember to check out all my links. Uh, you can go um, to podcast one, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I believe, uh, forward slash Amazon. As a matter of fact, you, uh, you go to Amazon and you click on the Killer Deals button. And it's going to lead you to the podcast. And you, they got all the podcasts listed. And choose mine. And Amazon going to kick back a little bit of money to keep this here uh, show running. That's right. That's how this whole thing going. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, check out all my links. You know what I mean? I got a link for uh, the USA. You know what I mean? <coughs> My mom. Ain't did that in a long time. The UK. Single match. 40 minutes. In the blue corner. At 6 foot 3. 300 pounds. The otherworldly zombie. Can't do it real loud for super now. Uh, in Canada. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hate it like once in the uh, yeah. I hate it. So, uh, yeah. You know. Uh, tune in next time. You know, uh, I'm, I'm trying to keep them, you know, I'm trying to keep them more rapid out there. I just did part one. Here's part two. I got another podcast coming. I got plenty of guests. You know, it's just uh, getting the time to get these things edited and out and, and busting them out there. You know, uh, we've been falling back, but with the advent of, the, you know, the the new game and everything, and you know, me uh, having uh, obligations of announcing and, and doing things like that and putting together shows, uh, it, it's been it's been wild for me. You know, it's been fun, so so fun. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know. I'm, uh, in the process of, you know, it's, uh, what time is it? It's 4.12 um, that I'm recording this outro. It's 4.12 a.m. And, um, you know, it, it's a it's a hustle, man. You know, uh, you know we, we are working. I'm going to uh, go take a look at some uh, some of the newer talent. You know, uh, you know, Raylan is looking good, man. You know, we just, uh, we just... You know, hooked her up the other day. You know, uh, she just now won that NXT V Women's Championship back. She beat Carmella. You know, Carmella beat her. Uh, we got footage of that. that that's probably going to be going up on XTV World. That first match between Carmella and uh, and Raylan, where Raylan lost the championship. I was shocked, you know, because she hadn't just got the belt. I mean, Raylan is a, she a badass competitor. You know, I can't wait this. Uh, so she started to get more exposure because you know she she one of those ones that's really uh really top talent you know also Shannon too you know I wanna I wanna shout her out because you know she one of the hardest working girls and you know shoot you know in my uh in my view would be the leader of that female locker room uh, on the NXT side I mean you know she's been holding it down since the beginning and you know she's a winner she keeps winning you know I definitely see her having a future. Um, because, you know, her move set is just so good, you know, it just can't be denied. So, uh, that's what I got to say about that. And I ain't going to keep on going too long. I just uh, want to thank you all for tuning in to this podcast. And I hope that wherever you are, it's a good time. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to see you.